Hello, everyone. Today we are in chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. This is the resurrection of Lazarus. Lazarus is a good friend of Jesus, and he had been dead for four days before Jesus arrives. And then Jesus calls out his name, and he walks out of the grave. It's a story that we sing songs about. And, and oh, there's so much imagery and truth to be found in the first 44 verses of this chapter. I want to encourage you to read that carefully. Today, however, I'm actually more interested in the last set of passages in this chapter. Beginning at verse 45, Lazarus had two sisters, you might recall, Martha and Mary. Mary was apparently the more popular one of the two. Listen to this as we start off at verse 45. Many of the people who were with Mary believed in Jesus when they saw this happen, referring to Lazarus' resurrection. But some went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the leading priests and Pharisees called the high council together. What are we going to do, they asked each other. This man certainly performs many miraculous signs. If we allow him to go on like this, soon everyone will believe in him. Then the Roman army will come and destroy both our temple and our nation. Here's what I think is important for us to get from this passage. It is so easy for us to, to vilify the Pharisees, the chief priests, and the religious leaders. But they genuinely believed that they were protecting the people they loved. This is, this is really important as we think about, about forces around us. There are a lot of people that are doing their very best to protect the liberties or the health or the whatever of others because they genuinely want to be a part of the solution. In this case, the, the Pharisees had the, the, the challenge of maintaining a fragile balance in a very, very hostile region. The Roman Empire was allowing the Jews to preserve their cultural traditions. This was very unusual. The Roman armies usually came through, wiped out any references to any local religions, and then forced everyone to, to worship the Roman and Greek gods. But they were allowing the Jews to maintain their identity as Jews so long as they were submissive under Roman occupation. Their fear was that Jesus was going to start an uprising, and that uprising would result in the Roman soldiers coming and wiping them all out. That was their fear. Caiaphas was the chief priest at the time, and he prophesied inadvertently when he said this at verse 50. You don't realize that it is better for you that one man should die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed. <laughs> Caiaphas was, was, of course, suggesting that the uh, assassination of Jesus would be the best thing to save Israel. And the truth is, the assassination of Jesus, his death on the cross, was a necessary sacrifice for all of us to have a path to salvation. Even in their narrow view that was so horribly misguided, genuine though it may have been, God still had a plan. So we must always trust that God has a plan, no matter what's going on around us. That said, we also need to be afraid of the fact that we might sometimes be the Pharisees. So we need to know to ask questions. When we see that God might be at work in the world around us, we need to be like Nicodemus and not be afraid to ask, Lord, what are you doing? And be willing to admit that maybe, no matter how sincere we've been, we might be wrong. It's okay. God is about restoring, healing, and guiding us. So long as we put our trust in Him, He'll never steer us wrong. So go forward today knowing that, that God is out there for us, that we may be making assumptions for all the right reasons, but assumptions are still assumptions. Turn to Christ always and trust in Him. Have a great day, everyone. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.